Welcome students. Today we are going to discuss morphological, anatomical and physiological responses of plants to salinity. The earliest written account of salt lands dates back to 2400 BC and was recorded in the Tigris Euphrates alluvial plains of Iraq. Salt affected lands occur in practically all climatic regions from the humid tropics to the polar regions. Saline soils can be found at different altitudes from below sea level, for example around the Dead Sea, to mountains rising above 5000 meters such as the Tibetan Plateau or the Rocky Mountains. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA Salinity Laboratory, saline soil can be defined as a soil having an electrical connectivity of solution extracted from the water saturated soil paste of 4 decisimens per meter. Furthermore, the occurrence of saline soils is not limited to desert conditions. All soils contain salts and all irrigation waters whether from canals or underground pumps including those considered for very good quality contain some dissolved salts. In fact, salts are a common and necessary component of soil and many salts, for example nitrates and potassium, are essential plant nutrients. Salts originate from mineral weathering, inorganic fertilizers, soil amendments, for example gypsum, composts and manures, and irrigation waters. In particular, the process of soil salinization is dramatically exacerbated and accelerated by crop irrigation. The overall effect of irrigation in the context of salinity is that it imports large quantities of new salts to the soil that were not there before. Over 800 million hectares of land throughout the world are salt affected, either by salinity or the associated conditions of sodasty. This is over 6% of the world's total land area. Mediterranean region are currently experiencing increasing salt stress problems resulting from seawater intrusion into aquifers and irrigation with brackish water. While an important cause of salinity in Australian continent is the deposition of oceanic salts carried in wind and rain. An additional important source of salts in many landscape soils comes from ice melters used on roads and sidewalk. The addition of virtually any soluble material will increase soil salinity. Among the various sources of soil salinity, irrigation combined with poor drainage is the most serious because it represents losses of once productive agriculture land. The irrigation water contains calcium, magnesium and sodium. When the water evaporates, calcium and magnesium often precipitate into carbonates, leaving sodium dominant in the soil. As a result, sodium concentration often exceed those of most micronutrients by one or two orders of magnitude and by even more in the case of micronutrients. High concentrations of sodium in the soil solution may depress nutrient ion activities and produce extreme ratio of sodium, calcium or sodium potassium. Increases in cation and their salts. NaCl is particular in the soil generates external osmotic potential that can prevent to reduce the influx of water into the root. The resulting water deficit is similar to dot conditions and additionally compounded by the presence of sodium ions. Improper management of salinity may lead to soil sodacity which results in damage to soil structure. In particular, the action of sodium ions when they occupy the cation exchange complex of clay particles cause soil aggregates to break down, increase blood density, 
make the soil more compact and decrease total porosity thereby hampering soil aeration as a result plants in saline soils not only suffer from high sodium level but are also affected by some degree of hypoxia soil type and environmental factors such as vapor pressure deficit radiation and temperature may further alter soil tolerance in fields the salt levels fluctuate seasonally and spatially and variation occurs due to the circumstances influencing each particular plant in addition the continuous use of same soil for growing vegetables results in an increase of salinization now we will discuss morphological changes in plants under saline stress number 1 growth characteristics the main effects are slow and insufficient germination of seeds physiological drought wilting desiccation stunted growth reduction in leaf area a reduction in root and shoot lengths retarded flowering fewer flowers sterility and smaller seeds etc membrane disorganization reactive oxygen species metabolic toxicity inhibition of photosynthesis and attenuated nutrient acquisition are the starting factors that initiate more catastrophic events seed germination is the most critical step in the life cycle of the plant but it is hampered by high salinity stress the causes of growth reduction differs but it is not clear which mechanism plants employ to maintain a residual growth and to what extent these mechanisms differ between short and long term responses the soluble salts in high concentration interfere with a balanced absorption of essential nutritional ions by the plants a high nacl concentration causes a reduction in growth parameters such as fresh and dry weight of leaves shoot and root along with decrease in moisture content but decrease in growth characteristics varies from species to species several aspects of reproductive growth including flowering pollination fruit development yield and quality are also influenced by salinity high salinity stress also delays the emergence of nodal roots leaves and tillers with decrease in relative growth rate rgr leaf area ratio lar and specific leaf area stomatal conductance leaf level transpiration and internal carbon dioxide concentrations decrease at high salinity along with senescence nacl stress also inhibits cell expansion however the precise contribution of subsequent processes to inhibition of cell division and expansion and acceleration of cell death has not been well elucidated number 2 plant root and shoot length root characteristics especially root length root length density and the number of thick roots are important for the plants to be able to have comparatively well established above ground parts by exploiting the available water a prolific root system can confer the advantage of supporting accelerated plant growth during the early crop growth stage and the extraction of water from shallow soil layers that is otherwise easily lost by evaporation roots are the most vulnerable part and they are directly exposed to salts or to drying soil but they are surprisingly robust inhibition of root length shoot length and number of leaves has been shown to decrease under salinity stress in plants according to scientists effect of salt stress results in reduced leaf growth and then root growth when salinity is applied to the root medium leaf elongation is immediately inhibited for maize rice barley tomato jowar etc 
salinity in soils restricts water availability to plants in a similar manner to water stress which causes reductions in growth rate and even in production. Number 3, biomass production. The reduction in shoot biomass production by the plants may be due to the chlorosis and necrosis of the leaves that reduce the photosynthetically active area. Shoot fresh weight of plants was highest at lower concentration and decline in plants exposed to higher levels of NaCl concentration. Reduction in fresh weight was also found in other plants like Catharanthus rhodius, maize, tomato, mulberry, etc. Water availability is one of the main environmental factors limiting photosynthesis and growth. Water concentrations of leaves and shoots increases significantly in plants grown at optimal levels of salinity than in plants grown at lower or higher salinities. Higher levels of salt can produce decreased water uptake in plants. Salt treatment induced a reduction in relative water content in the leaves, which indicates a loss of turgor that resulted in limited water availability for cell extension process. Increased moisture content under saline environment shows the higher water content per unit leaf area, which may dilute the accumulated salts in the cell sap. Now, we will discuss anatomical changes in plants under salt stress. Both halophytes and non-halophytes exhibit remarkable anatomical changes when exposed to elevated levels of salt. However, most conspicuous changes occur in leaves. It is reported that a smaller increase in the mesophyll area in Atriplex petula halophyte than that in Facilus vulgaris and Gossypium hirsutum, both glycophytes. This reveals a greater tendency of Atriplex to maintain constant mesophyll area and is an adaptive feature which reflects greater degree of shielding to photosynthetic mechanisms from harmful effects of salts. Many salt tolerant plants, particularly dicotyledonous halophytes, are characterized by xeromorphic characteristics such as thick succulent leaves, which apparently aid sufficient water storage. Smaller reduced leaves with dense covering of pubescence are also a characteristic of xerophytes which account for a successful survival of halophytes under dryland salinities. Salt secretion by microhairs has been detected only in certain chloridoidae, all having chloridoid type microhairs with basal cell portioning membranes. It has not been detected in many species with microhairs that lack basal cell portioning membrane. For example, the chloridoid type microhairs of Sporobulus elongatus and Eleusine indica do not secrete salts despite their possession of portioning membranes. At leaf level, there are certain appendages which help the plant to secrete excess salt from the main body. Most important among these are salt secretory trichomes, for example, in atriplex. Second type is multicellular salt glands, which occur in many desert and coastal habitat flowering plants and are confined to the members of family, including Poaceae, Avenciaceae, Acanthaceae, Frankenciaceae, Plumbaginaceae, and Tamaraceae. In contrast, the stem of halophyte namely Salicornia fruticosa has a simple cortex and single layered epidermis which is thin walled and the photosynthetic tissue has palisade and parenchymatous cells for storage of water. Stomatal features like density and size are critical for controlling transpirational loss from leaf surface and even more critical under physiological drought. The importance of stomatal characteristics is 
in avoiding water loss through leaf surface has been reported in several species like Dischelis, Spacata, Barley and Wheat. The roots of saline desert plants have reduced cortex to shorten the distance between epidermis and steel. The Casparian strip is much wider in the highly dry and salt marsh habitat plants as compared to mesophytes. In saline habitat plants, the endodermis and exodermis represent barriers of variable resistance to the flow of water and ions from cortex to the steel under prevailing conditions. Salt adaptation is advantageous for efficient functioning of endodermis when the protoplasts are attached to the large portion of the radial and transverse walls of endodermal cells. Drought avoidance is a vital adaptive strategy against salt stress. Modifications like highly developed bulliform cells can play an important role in avoiding in water loss during physiological drought caused by salinity. Thick epidermis is a characteristic feature of many salt tolerant terrestrial species and this is one of the most valuable mechanisms relating to xeric adaptations to prevent water loss. Root arenchyma is reported to be a distinctive attribute of waterlogged plants. Arenchyma formation in halophytes may aid in efficient solute transport in addition to oxygen. Increased sclerenchyma under salinity stress not only provides rigidity to the tissue or organs but also is vital for reducing water loss through plant surfaces. Increased sclerification has been reported by several researchers in salt tolerant or halophytic plants for example, Supartina, Alterniflora, Puxinelia, Tiniflora and Prosophis strombulifera. Now, we will discuss physiological responses of plants under salt stress. Salt stress affects all the major physiological processes such as water relations, photosynthesis, mineral uptake, nitrogen metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, etc. Now, we will throw light on these aspects one by one. Number one, water relations. Increase of salt in the root medium can lead to a decrease in leaf water potential and hence may affect many plant processes. Osmotic effects of salt on plants are as a result of lowering of the soil water potential due to increase in solute concentration in the root zone. At very low soil water potentials, this condition interferes with plants ability to extract water from the soil and maintain turgor. However, at low or moderate salt concentration, plants adjust osmotically that is accumulate solutes and maintain a potential gradient for the influx of water. It has been reported that salt treatment causes a significant decrease in relative water content RWC in sugar beet varieties. Decrease in RWC indicates a loss of turgor that results in limited water availability for cell extension processes. Number two is photosynthesis. Growth of plants is dependent on photosynthesis and therefore environmental stresses affecting growth also affect photosynthesis. Studies conducted by a number of authors on different plant species have shown that photosynthetic capacity is suppressed by salinity. A positive association between photosynthetic rate and yield under saline conditions has been found in different crops such as Gossypium hirsutum and Asparagus officinalis. Inhibition of vegetative growth in plants subjected to salinity is associated with a marked inhibition of photosynthesis. The effect of salinity on photosynthetic rate depends on salt concentration and plant species. There is evidence that at low salt concentration, salinity may stimulate photosynthesis, for instance in Bruguria parviflora. Photosynthetic rate increased at low salinity and decreased at high salinity, whereas stomatal conductance remain unchanged 
at low salinity and decreased at high salinity. Plant biologists attributed the decrease in photosynthetic rate to salinity induced factors. Number one, dehydration of cell membranes which reduce their permeability to carbon dioxide. High salt concentration in soil and water create high osmotic potential which reduce the availability of water to plants. Decrease in water potential causes osmotic stress which reversibly inactivates photosynthetic electron transport via shrinkage of intercellular spaces. Number two, salt toxicity caused particularly by sodium and chlorine ions. Chlorine inhibits photosynthetic rate through its inhibition of nitrogen uptake by the roots. Plant biologists found that nitrogen was significantly reduced in salt stressed sultana wines and this reduction was correlated with photosynthetic reduction. The reduced nitrogen uptake combined with osmotic stress may explain the inhibitory effect of salinity on photosynthesis. Number three, reduction of carbon dioxide supply because of the closure of stomata. The reduction in stomatal conductance results in restricting the availability of carbon dioxide for carboxylation reactions. Stomatal closure minimizes loss of water through transpiration and this affects light harvesting and energy conservation systems, thus leading to alteration in chloroplast activity. Higher stomatal conductance in plants is known to increase carbon dioxide diffusion into the leaves and thereby favor higher photosynthetic rates. Higher net assimilation rates could in turn favor higher crop yields as was found in Pima cotton, Gospium barbidens. There are also reports of non-stomatal inhibition of photosynthesis under salt stress. This non-stomatal inhibition is due to increased resistance to carbon dioxide diffusion in the liquid phase from the mesophyll wall to the site of carbon dioxide reduction in the chloroplast and reduced efficiency of RUBPKs. Other causes of reduced photosynthetic rates due to salinity are enhanced senescence induced by salinity, changes in enzyme activity induced by alterations in cytoplasmic structure and negative feedback by reduced sink activity. Although the rate of photosynthesis is reduced under salt stress, this is not the cause of reduction in the rate of cell expansion as indicated by several lines of evidence. Growth is reduced more rapidly and at lower concentrations of sodium in the leaf than is photosynthesis. This means that plants can withstand a certain loss in photosynthetic rate without any impact on growth. The relationship between photosynthesis and growth of plants under saline conditions is not well understood. Many changes take place in plants in order to enable them to tolerate saline conditions and maintain photosynthetic activity. Number three is carbohydrates. Among the various organic osmotica, sugars contribute up to 50% of the total osmotic potential in glycophytes subject to saline conditions. The accumulation of soluble carbohydrates in plants has been widely reported as a response to salinity or drought despite a significant decrease in net carbon dioxide assimilation rate. Carbohydrates such as sugars, glucose, fructose, sucrose, fructans and starch accumulate under salt stress, playing a leading role in osmoprotection, osmotic adjustment, carbon storage and radical sequencing. A decrease in starch content and an increase in both reducing and non-reducing sugars and polyphenol lab have been reported in leaves of Brugira parviflora. In leaves of tomato, the contents of soluble sugar and total saccharides are increased significantly but the starch content is not affected. Trehalose, 
a disaccharide accumulates under various abiotic stresses and protects membranes and proteins in cells exposed to stress that cause water deficit and reduced aggregation of denatured proteins. According to scientists, trehalose has a suppressive effect on apoptotic cell death. There is now conclusive evidence to suggest that trehalose is present in trace amounts in vascular plants including major crops, but the actual role of this osmolite is still unclear. Number 4. Proteins Proteins that accumulate in plants under saline conditions may provide a storage form of nitrogen that is reutilized later and may play a role in osmotic adjustment. They may be synthesized de novo in response to salt stress or may be present constitutively at low concentration. It has been concluded that a number of proteins induced by salinity are cytoplasmic which can cause alterations in cytoplasmic viscosity of the cells. A higher content of soluble proteins has been observed in salt tolerant cultivars of barley, sunflower, finger millet and rice. Soluble protein increases at low salinity and decreases at high salinity in mulberry cultivars. In higher plants, osmotic stress induces several proteins in vegetative tissues which are related to late embryogenesis abundant LEA LEA proteins. The correlation between LEA protein accumulation in vegetative tissues and stress tolerance indicates its protective role under dehydration stress. Number 5 is Amino Acidis and Amides. Amino Acidis, Alanine, Arginine, Glycine, Serine, Leucine and Valine together with the Amino Acid, Proline and the non-protein Amino Acid citrulline and ornithine and amides such as glutamine and asparagine have also been reported to accumulate in plants subjected to salt stress. Total free amino acids in the leaves have been reported to be higher in salt tolerant than in salt sensitive lines of sunflower, safflower, eruca sativa and lens culinaris. Proline, which occurs widely in higher plants and accumulate in larger amounts than other amino acid. Proline accumulation normally occurs in the cytosol where it contributes substantially to the cytoplasmic osmotic adjustment. It is osmotically very active and contributes to membrane stability and mitigates the effect of NaCl on cell membrane disruption. Even at supraoptimal levels, Proline does not suppress enzyme activity. Proline may act as a signaling or regulatory molecule able to activate multiple responses that are component of the adaptation process. Salt tolerant alpha alpha plants rapidly double their proline content in roots whereas in salt sensitive plants the increase was slow. Dear students, this is all about morphological, anatomical and physiological responses of plants to salinity. Thank you very much.